some of the four-wheel drive vehicles that we see, we see this device, which is called a freewheeling hub. What the purpose of this is, is to disconnect the drive shaft coming from the axle, the differential, to the wheel. But of course, when we come to an off-road situation, we need to be able to drive the axle and the wheel at the same time. On this, you will see there's two marks. There's one mark that says free, and one mark that says lock, with a corresponding arrow in the middle here. All we have to do before we get into a situation where we need to engage four-wheel drive is to turn it to the right. That will then lock the axle shaft coming from the differential to the wheel. So we're 100% certain that when we go into an off-road situation, our four-wheel drive will work. These can be left on all of the time. It doesn't really matter, but they are there to be released if you wish. And of course, we must remember, we have to do both sides. When it comes to having to engage four-wheel drive, we have to know and understand the lever and the switch mechanism we have here. As we said, this vehicle is in two-wheel drive most of the time, and when we need to go into four-wheel drive, firstly, if the road becomes bad, we would go to four-wheel drive high. We would then press this button, H4, which would then, when the ignition is on, we would see a green light come up in the dashboard. So that would be for our normal roads where we've got dusty, dusty tracks, a bit, of a bit of a difficult terrain to encounter. Should we then get into the really hard stuff where we need to drive slowly and more carefully, we then need to look at using this lever to change to low four. This lever has three positions on the top written, high four, a neutral, and a low four position. So when we get to the bad stuff, we pull it through the backwards, we pull it through the neutral position and we pull it into low four. Again, the light will still be on on the dashboard, but we, sit, we are then engaged in our very low ratios, which means that we can climb hills, descend hills, and we can travel through the, the difficult, muddy, sandy obstacles that we face. Because we are gonna now attempt to climb a steep hill, we need to sh make sure we're in the correct gear for the, for the obstacle. Because this hill is steep, we're gonna use low four. So before we attempt to go up the hill, we pull the lever right back to low four and make sure that our green light is illuminated on the dashboard. When we get to the bottom of the hill, we will first try and attempt to go up the hill in second gear. If we use second gear, we have a lot of traction, but it means because we're in second gear, we may not get the wheel spin, which would then, which would then mean we would lose grip. Okay, here we are at the bottom of our hill. We need to go up. As we see, there is some loose dirt there. So normally we would try and use second gear to go up a hill like this. I will first show you what happens if we try first gear. We may, we may get too much wheel spin. And we fail. We use second gear, we pull away steadily and increase our speed as we go up the hill, but not by too much. It gives good grip and takes us up the hill steady and secure. Okay, when it comes to going down a hill, we're still gonna use our four wheel drive uh, to help us go down the hill. And because we're gonna be in low ratio, that's gonna assist us because we're gonna have maximum braking from the engine. Having a diesel engine in this car means that the engine braking will be very good. And it means that we will not have to touch our brakes only if we just need to steady the speed a little. But normally we would go down the hill in first gear, low ratio, and we take all our feet off the pedals. We don't touch the clutch the brake or the accelerator. If we touch the clutch and disconnect the engine from the transmission, the car will just slide on its own. We keep the clutch up and then we have the engine braking, which is slowing us down as we go down the hill. When we come to going downhill, as I said, we want to keep the engine doing all the braking. We get to the top of the hill, we take our foot off the clutch, we just have our foot over the brake very slowly in case we just need to slow the vehicle down. 
but all our braking is to be done by the engine. Okay, we've now come out of the really bad stuff. We're now going to head down a dirty, dusty track back to the to the main road. So for that, we would use uh, high four. So where we've been in low four up to now, we just push the lever on this car forward, fully forward. That takes us into high range, but we still keep the button on H4. So that means we have all four wheels driving. And again, we make sure that the green light is on. Obviously, when we've, we've reached a tarmac road or a solid road, then we can switch H4 off go back to just high two-wheel drive. Of course, if you have any more questions, and we hope you're gonna drive safely following this video, but if you've had any more questions, feel free to ask us. Or of course, your first point of uh, reference should always be the, the handbook in the car. That gives a lot of good information about the vehicle, also about your off-road driving.